Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at background radiation and what we mean by background radiation and a couple of sources of where this comes from. So the first thing is that background radiation is radiation that's all around us all the time. So it's radiation that's around us all the time and it comes from a various number of places. So let's take a look what they might be. Here's a pie chart showing all the different sources of background radiation. The first one on the right hand side, the biggest dose, which is about 50%, is called radon, which is a gas, and that's found in the air around us. That's the biggest kind of uh, dose of radiation you might get in the background. We've also got some types of rock that are radioactive, and if those rocks are used for making buildings, that means rocks and buildings are a source of background radiation. We've got cosmic rays, and that's just basically rays that come from outer space and fall on planet Earth and they make up some of the background radiation that we're exposed to. And also food and drink. For example, did you know that bananas contain or give out small amounts of radiation? Nothing dangerous, but they do. We also have a source from the medical industry, for example, x-rays, and these cont contribute to background radiation as well. But we've got a very tiny gray slice there that's very, very small. It's around about 4%. So if you've added up all those percentages and come to 100, the reason why we've got that little one there, which takes it over 100, is because the numbers are rounded up and approximate. So this comes from man-made sources, for example, nuclear testing, weapons tests. I'm sure you've seen on the news countries that are doing nuclear weapons tests from time to time. Also, nuclear accidents. There are two kind of famous ones from recent history. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about Chernobyl in Russia. This was a major nuclear accident in 1986. And we also have Fukushima, Fukushima, which is from a accident or an accident in Japan in 2011. And those both contribute to background radiation. Power stations as well, nuclear power stations contribute to man-made background radiation as well. But altogether they make a tiny amount. We could split these up into natural sources and man-made sources. So if you have a quick look, I'm sure you can figure out which ones are which, but all of these here in the pinky kind of highlight, these are all man-made sources of background radiation, whereas all the rest are natural sources. So we could highlight those just to be clear on what they are. So the gas from the air, rocks and buildings, our cosmic rays from outer space, food and drink, all of these are natural sources of background radiation. So let's just highlight that there just to make that a bit clearer. Okay, so if we look at the doses of radiation that most people are exposed to, we can measure it in a unit called uh, millisieverts, and the total is approximately 2.5 millisieverts per year, per person. 2.5 millisieverts per year. A sievert is made up of 1,000 millisieverts. This is a measure of dose of radiation. That line means approximately, and as you can imagine, that dose will vary from person to person and it depends on their location, in other words where they might live or work, and in fact also the kind of job they do. So if they work in the medical industry, for example working with x-rays, that might increase the dose, or if they work in a nuclear power station, that's going to increase the dose. Now we have to make some kind of judgment in terms of how uh, dangerous that might be, and how much you could increase that before it gets dangerous, and in fact about 100 millisieverts, about 100 millisieverts is the minimum dose that can uh, actually increase the risk of cancer or gives a detectable increase in the risk of cancer. So we could have up to four, five, six, even more millisieverts depending on the kind of job you do and it wouldn't be even close to that 100 millisieverts uh, that actually might uh, be dangerous. Okay, so one other thing about background radiation is uh, you might have done this uh, in class but here we've got a Geiger-Muller tube, and we've, we've uh, seen this before in a previous video. A Geiger-Muller tube, and this measures radiation in a slightly different way. This measures counts per minute, or well, it could be counts per second, but often it's in counts per minute, and that's the amount of radiation given off by a substance. Now, if we have a, a Geiger-Muller tube and we have no source of radiation, there's a good chance we will still detect a little bit of radiation. And a typical example of that might be about 15 counts per minute. If we then introduce a radioactive source, and as I say, you might have done this in class with some alpha, beta, and gamma radiation sources, or your teacher might have demonstrated it for you. But if we add a radiation source, 
one that's, for example, a source of alpha radiation, we might get a count rate of, for example, maybe say 51 counts per minute. 51 counts per minute. So how do we determine the actual amount of radiation given off by that source? Well, it's just a case of taking our counts with the source and subtracting the background radiation. In this example, it'd be 51 minus 15, and that gives us an answer of 36 counts per minute. Okay, so that's the only other kind of place we, where we use this idea of background radiation. There's our background radiation. Let's just label that 15 counts per minute. Let's just put that all in the center so it's uh, slightly neater. And there we have it, background radiation.